What's going on, everybody? I'm W. And I'm the Thick Baby. And we're going to be bringing you some nerd pop culture. We got some great topics today. We have a Legend of Zelda auction, live action Naruto, and sneak peek, credible inside news for myself on Dune Part 2. Ooh. All right, so I got Hideo Kojima's documentary, Connecting Worlds, is now available on Disney+. Plus. This is a runtime of about 60 minutes or 11 minutes less than his longest cutscene for Metal Gear Solid 4. I don't okay. remember if, I don't, I don't know if you remember this from Metal Gear Solid 4. This is a big talk back when it came out about the cutscene in this game is an hour and 10 minutes. I do remember people talking about it, yeah. but I never watched it. I never watched it. Well, who's got that kind of time? It's yeah. a whole movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but this is his documentary is mostly about Death Stranding and the making of it and everything. I never even played Death Stranding. I didn't either. I heard bad things about I heard, it. I thought I heard I thought basically it was like walking empty. simulator. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. a, a walking simulator and it's empty. I just remember they got Norman Reedus for it and that was about it. Yeah, and that was yeah. the big thing. Was Norman Reedus is the main face of the game. Yeah, but if you're a fan uh, a fan of Hideo Kojima, uh, go check that out on Disney Plus. Okay. Um, I might check it out just for the hell of it, but. Yeah, figure yeah. out what a little bit more about Death Stranding. Maybe yeah. I'll play it. Uh, Shang Chi writer or co-writer and director Destin Cretton, I hope I said your name right, uh, is writing and directing a new live-action Naruto movie. So he's okay. got the creator of Naruto's blessing, and they're watching over him doing this. But we're coming to a live-action Naruto movie, which. I feel like is on the heels of seeing how good One Piece did as a series. Say, did he do the One Piece series? No. No? Okay. Uh, I feel like he's seen the, how good the One Piece series does. He's seen the live action uh, Avatar that just came out. Ooh. And it's like, what next? Not I haven't to... watched that. Is that good? Uh, I'm about one episode in, I'll be honest. I haven't had a chance to get through it yet. I think all the hate it's getting online for like the CGI and not sticking to the story stuff, it's bullshit. Yeah? Yeah. The animation is great. It's not amazing by any means, but it's a Netflix series that's, that didn't have a lot thrown at it. The CGI is good. Good enough to the watch. The earth bending's better than the dancing they did to throw right. one pebble yeah. last time, okay? <laughs> okay? So it's pretty good. Uh, the complaints they have with how the series is run is definitely based off of there's small changes to it. Like, the, it doesn't open with, and then the Fire Nation attack and the whole yeah. dialogue. Uh, there's also small parts where, like, they're going through the tunnel scene. Aang's not there, which he is in the show. So it's, oh, like, the small, tunnel love thing. it's small yeah. things. But overall, it's, it's a new story for a new generation of people. If you don't like it, it's probably because you're too fixated on this great cartoon that you want this new thing to be good. Yeah. Yeah. But it's great. I would go check that out. All right. I'm definitely going to give it a watch. Uh, but I'm definitely going to check out the live action Naruto to see if it's good. I'm a fan of Naruto in general. Not a super fan, but I've seen the whole thing and yeah. it's good. It's cool. Um, I'd like to see some of the characters brought to life on the screen well, but I have trouble believing they'll be able to fit some of them. It'll be interesting to see a Genjutsu. Yeah, it's kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh, where some of their outfits are so ridiculous that they yes. just wouldn't translate over to a live like action. the shark guy. Yeah. Plus, just Yugi's hair. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, last one I got here is 22-year-old Californian man named Kiro Ooh. recently put up, I hope it's Kiro or not Cairo, uh, recently put up an eBay, on eBay a copy of Legend of Zelda for the NES from 19 so he originally put this thing up there. It's been in his family since they got it okay. uh, for $17,000 on eBay and immediately sold it. And then he started getting offers right after that sale came through that was like, I'll drive to you and give you 30000 today. Oh. And he was like, maybe I should pull this off. So he cancels the sale and gets it appraised. Uh, after getting it appraised and graded by CGC, it's sitting at $870,000 appraisal oh my gosh for yeah. the game why is it so expensive it's just a collector's the... thing it's just no one has an original not damaged box set of legend of zelda nes really yeah. it's that rare apparently yeah i think one went in 2021 for seven hundred thousand. i'm gonna have to look through all my stuff i, <laughs> got, like, I, I got, got one, one. <laughs> i but i had that system return so. and look in the comments to see <laughs> if w found this system <laughs> i might i'm all gonna be freaking out i'm gonna go through <laughs> <laughs> all right that's all i got for that one all right well 
we got it's Mormon time, guys. Uh, uh, <laughs> can I throw up on camera? <laughs> you, I will accept it for this one. <laughs> uh, I never saw it. I heard it was absolutely horrible. But Sony's Morbius hits Disney Plus on March 1st. I did watch it, and it was terrible. I, I saw all the hate online and the memes of, like, it's Morbin time and it's stuff. It's Morbin time. It was that bad. I, I Somehow, I made it through the whole thing, but it's... Oh, my God, the effort it took. Act, it actually took work to sit there. <laughs> I bet. So, I mean, it's out. I'm going to watch it just for the comedy relief and just see how horribly great it is to laugh at. So check it out, March 1st. I suggest being on a lot of uh, something to get through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Uh, but for any of you that don't know, uh, Morbius is a vampire He's a scientist. He's a very cool character. I knew nothing about him. Yeah, he's he's a scientist Turned trying vampire. to get his disease cured by investigating vampire bats and being like, if we cross these gene, gene okay. sequences, it'll cure my ailment, basically, is what he's All trying right. to do. And then it backfires on him, and he becomes Morbius, which is basically a vampire. All that's right. what it is. Well, that's cool. But I guess he's normally a villain of Spider-Man, and instead he plays an anti-hero in the movie. So we'll see. It's just Jared Leto. He just lets us down. Yeah, and it was and Jared again. Leto, too. He lets us down so much. Yeah, he hasn't it's done crazy. too well. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, another movie coming to HBO Max on March 8th. I'm excited about it. I didn't go to theaters and see this one myself, and I love the character. We got Wonka. The movie, coming March 8th. I don't know, man. I've I seen the trailers, and there's something about Timothy Chalamet playing Wonka that I just, I don't feel like it's not going to be good. But I like Timothy Chalamet. He was great in the first Dune. It, it, that's the only thing I've seen him in that's like, great. And then yeah. everything else I see him in, I'm like, hmm. What else was he in? I don't know. That's why I wanted to see him. I was like, well, he's great in Dune. So he go looks Wonka. like he's ruining Wonka. I feel like he's just not Wonka. That's I can't wait is. to see it. I'm so oh. super excited. We'll give it a watch. Maybe it's more of in time. So <laughs> March 8th, the week of that podcast, I will be doing a slight review for my nerd pop culture and letting you guys know what I thought about all it. Right, all right. And big news, speaking of Timothy Charlemagne and the month of March, on March 1st, we got Dune Part 2 hitting theaters. So ready for it. And I cannot wait to go see that. Number one was so good. I loved the characters they cast for everything. Even Timothy Chalamet, who I'm not, I just, I don't know, maybe I'm just not a fan of him, but I, I liked him in this. He was good. Um, I Jason liked Jason Momoa. Momoa's character. Yeah. I liked, uh, oh my God, I'm not going to remember, dude who plays Moon Knight that I can't remember. He's in that, right? As the dad. Or the king. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I can't remember his name. Yeah, I can't um, remember his Isaac name either. something, I, I think. Yeah. Or maybe that's Moon Knight's character. I cannot <laughs> I remember, can't remember his name, but um, yes, yeah, right. It's great yeah. cast in the movies, and I is the love interest other side kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I'm so ready to see more of, what is the planet called? Arrakis. Arrakis. Yeah. And the giant sandworms. Sandworms. More alien species, so, the Bene Gesserit Do you remember in. where the first movie left off? The first movie left off with him seeing someone riding a sandworm. Sandworm? Yeah. Okay. And that's literally how it closes. He sees a guy riding a sandworm, and then it's like black screen. All right. Yeah. So, right on. I, I read the books. The books were great. And I really feel like, without giving out spoilers for anyone that doesn't want any, the part two will not leave you dissatisfied. Uh, all I need is more Ben and Jezreel. Oh, man, you need to know. You want to know more about it. No, I don't. we don't need to know more about it. We're going to watch the movie. You <laughs> want to know. Uh, but, yeah, that's all I got for my nerd pop culture. Hey, everybody. I'm the Thick Baby. And I'm W. And thanks for watching our nerd pop culture segment. We have merch out. It's sweatshirts with us animated on the back of them and our logo on the front of them. They're very comfortable, and they're first come, first serve on all the sizes, so make sure you get them fast. You can pick those up at newschoolproject.us, link provided in the bio. But thanks for watching, and we'll be back next week with more nerd pop culture.